Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. Uh, let's deal with uh, number 37. Number 37 is this particular Torah portion. We're going to touch on the Rastafari Sabbath or Sabbatical revelation concerning the number 37. The number 37. So let me clear the board right here for a moment. Grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and bring a willing and attentive heart and the mind to receive the half of the story not told since our ancestors, the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews, was brought to these shores of the Americas and the Caribbean, circa fifteen thirty AD. And that's very prophetical, that that number numerology, because if you add four hundred years to fifteen thirty, even if you want to scroll back to fourteen ninety two. It's very interesting because 1492, they say Christopher Columbus discovered America. Okay, add 400 years to that, you have 1892, right? And the birth of Lich Tefari, who we know as Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the king of kings of Ethiopia. So, um, what it says, his truth, Jah's truth, is marching on. And we, who are the sons and daughters, especially we as the sons of God, we have to come up to the grade. You understand? We have to come up to the grade. We have to know these things. You understand? We have to know what is in our divine heritage, what our divine heritage is all about. And I said I was going to do this before, before I got into the subject matter of the fringe. I just touched a little bit on the subject matter of the fringes and perhaps what we'll do. And seek to do as best as possible. Sometimes we'll give an overview, right, an overview of the sabbatical portion. But there are some times, like now, we feel we have to go into some of the specifics of it because it's a revelation, there's a prophecy that the Holy Spirit is revealing concerning a particular portion, especially this particular Torah portion, which is the 37th Torah portion. But we wanted to touch on some of the new some of the new um, books that we have um, available, some of the new books that we have available. Um, we had touched on church, the church history of Ethiopia. This is a 17th century book. This is from 1696, this particular work right here. Michael Geddes, um, The Church History of Ethiopia, 1696 A.D. is a rare book, and true historical account, among other things, of the two great splendid so-called Roman missions into that empire, in other words, the Judeo-Christian Ethiopia, being placed in their true light. This is a very rare, and we were so fortunate, I'll show you the cover right here, we were so fortunate to find this particular document, you understand, and to be able to publish this document here in its fullest, in its fullest sense. And this particular document perhaps was not published since, what, 1696, maybe a couple times in the 1700s. That almost 300 years, this book is over 300 years old. And it gives a particular truthful insight into Ethiopia. You, and then when you compare um, latter accounts of Ethiopia, we both can see um, the changes that was occurring because of outside influences, but from the older manuscripts, we can really connect it with the biblical, with the Beta Israel, with the Black Jewish and Judaic roots. So this one is very good because it's coming from um, what we would call a more Protestant approach. In other words, the Protestants one time were truly and faithfully, you understand, um, enemies of mystery Babylon, which they identified with the Pope. So when they discovered Ethiopia and recognized, well, what Ethiopia really stood for in Ethiopia and the Bible, and when those um, explorers and others was able to actually get a first-hand view of Ethiopia, many of them were very impressed, and, 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 and perhaps because of that, they had to try to rewrite things later on, you know, to try to reflect 
um, perhaps the Ethiopians are making these things up, perhaps not really true. What's so very interesting is that documents like this proves that the Ethiopian uh, divine heritage, our divine heritage, is right and exact. And this particular book, it, it really backs up and proves what the true Rastafari, you understand, um, perspective is, but we didn't have this information, we didn't have these documents, you will tend to really say, see, here it goes, here's the proof, this is the proof right here. So this particular book right here, um, you know, there's narratives and stories of both the church history of Ethiopia past and present, true and false, that have been circulated and given credence to for better and for worse. However, this document, it testifies to a church, this particular document, because it's called Church History of Ethiopia from 1696, and this document testifies to a church, the true Ethiopic church, the true Tawahedo church, the true church of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, Siyume or Shiyume Egziavihir Nugusha Negesht Ze Ethiopia. This particular document is a testimony to that because it, it testifies to a church that was never at any time under papal yoke. At no time was it under papal yoke. So Michael Geddes, this particular book, The Church of Ethiopia, 1696 A.D., it bears witness to the truth of the time and age when the faithful Ethiopian princes, instead of only being nursing fathers, as they have become in the modern so-called orthodoxy that we see, um, um, Bekele, Bekele, instead, quote, they struggled hard of late years to have brought its neck under, never rested until it had both broke that insupportable yoke asunder when Rome tried to put its Roman yoke on Ethiopia in, in, in the historical record. And we're speaking of that time circa post 1530 AD. You understand? 1530 AD, the Portuguese, the Akhmagran, a Mohammedan invasion of Ethiopia. The same thing that's going on today with so-called um, Al-Qaeda and, and Islamic um, fanaticism and terrorism in Africa. And we're seeing more of, it, more of this happen, not just in the Horn of Africa, but even in West Africa today. It's Ethiopia's testimony and Ethiopia repentance and returning to her true roots that is the true divine victory and the divine assistance can only be gotten based on repentance and based on truth. You understand? So when we look at the condition of Ethiopia and Africa, it's because the truth has been suppressed, and instead people trust in lies and slander against the true Judeo-Christian foundation of Ethiopia and against the true good news of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, and I and I, the faithful and true Rastafari. But we recognize that the heart of the battle, the sweet of the victory, because the battle is Yahweh's. The battle is not I and I's. It's Jah's battle. You understand? He is I and I head. He is I and I leader. You understand? So the church never rested until it had broke that Roman yoke and secured itself from ever having the like attempts made again upon its liberty. Remember, this was 16... 96. They were documenting what had happened, you understand, in the, in the middle, in, in, in the early to middle and perhaps some of the late 1500s. So little did they know that there would be a battle of Adawa. I mean, look at the dates. Check out the dates for a moment. A battle of Adawa roughly 200 or so years after this book was written. So it's a snapshot nearly 300 years ago. You'll send roughly around the same time that others of our people were marched from East Africa to West Africa and ended up on these boats crossing the Ethiopic Ocean to the Americas. So that Ethiopian connection should be very, very clear. If you look in old dictionaries on the Ethiopia, they'll say Negro. You know what I'm Because then the truth was, 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 they knew what the truth was. But as 
many of us started to read and as they wanted to um, disguise their dirty deeds, they started to change things. Like people don't say nigger, you understand? Or they don't want to say the N-word. It's like the N-word thing. Because they don't want to confront the truth of the matter. They want to try to pretend. You understand? Pr try to pretend and try to say it doesn't matter like what race Yeshua, what race the Moshiach is. Then why would they have a COINTELPRO spend so much um, 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 put so much blood and, 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 and treasure in that and so much to cover that up and so many ones were martyred and killed and set up because of that if they wasn't truly trying to stop the rise of Christ or stop the rise of the black messiah. It's very important for us to understand how all of this goes together. So this particular document right here, we are so happy to be able to publish this because um, what, what the author said here in 1696 was true until the outrages of the modern times, such as 1896 A.D., the Battle of Ottawa, which occurred during the reign of Emperor Menelik or Menelik II, Dagmawi Menelik. Now, this book it chronicles and narrates from a variety of then existing resources, because many of these resources actually come out of some of the papal archives. So it uses some of the Jesuit and papal evidence you understand, to basically tell on themselves as well as to give the true perspective, what they, what they really observed in the, in the Jesuits' records and what they put out for the uh, ecclesiastical political position against the Church of Ethiopia was two different things. So this author goes into the actual documents and publishes widely from these particular documents um, the majority of them at the time written in like Latin, but here translated by this particular English author. You, all right, this particular English author. So this book it chronicles and narrates from a variety of then existing resources compiled and presented by the author, the former and then anti-papal Protestant Church of England. You see, the Church of England in, in eighteen in sixteen ninety six was not like this. Um, Vatican II ecumenicalism thing going on where we see that they were enemies historically but there, there's been some sellout because now they all are hobnobbing together. Why did um, um, the Protestant Church of England, what was the true reasons why these once Catholics when they got the light of the Bible and the truth, when they were able to read the Bible for themselves, they resisted you know, saying, the papacy and they exposed the papacy as Babylon, you know, saying, as this mystery Babylon. So it's nothing new when we as Rastafari say that, that, that the Pope of Rome is symbolic and the Church of Rome is symbolic of that Babylon and is a part of that biblical prophecy. Even the papal works themselves. If you look at a Vulgate or Dewey Rain's Bible, the Papal Bible, and some of the old ones that at the footnote in Revelation, they basically said this refers to Rome. So they know the truth. You see? And some say, well, if they, if, if they know that, then why they just keep going about their business? They know that there's judgment. It's not what... It's, it's, it's not... They've already made their decision. You understand? It's, a, it's about... The eye and eyes about you and me. It's about the people of the world who still have a stake, in other words, in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, who have not sold our souls, who have not sold out, who have maintained um, fidelity and faith with the word of God. You know what I'm saying? It's to, it's to deceive as many people in these last days as they're able to deceive. But the devil, Satan, and his agents are already judged. They are already judged. You see, so they're playing like, yes, they're going to win and beat God, but they're not going to beat God. They already know that. They want to figure out how many of y'all can they con and can they get to be like Esau to sell out their blessing or be like Iscariot to betray the Savior, to betray the Saviors. Because those who do are going to end up in that very same lake of fire. They're going to end up in the black hole. They're going to end up in oblivion. Yes, it is real. 
You understand? Yes, it is real. You can call it an Nibiru event. You can call it a planet. You can call it some, some funny celestial occurrence or whatever like that. But it is real. See, the scripture already told us, but now as we're gaining knowledge, we're beginning to see that the only thing that really fully explains a lot of these strange things that they're discovering or uncovering or facts that they're recognizing is the word of truth. It is the Bible. And they're recognizing how ignorant they were. You understand? But at the same time, we have to recognize how true His Majesty and the Word of Jah is. And do all in our power, you understand, to, 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 to do the will of the King of Kings in Christ. To learn of the will and to do it. You understand in that first what that work, what work is it? To believe, to have faith. And and that's not as easy as folks think. It's not saying, yes, I believe, so for some, but then when you really put into the crisis, Satan even said concerning Job, he says, skin for skin, man will give everything he got, you understand, know, to save his life. So the devil overstood. You understand, know he overstood. You know, um, it's man that should have overstood. You know, so this book is, a, is, is very interesting because um, there was an anti-papal Protestant church of England circa 1696. It was waning then, but it still was then. And a certain of the brotherhood who had, quote, a right understanding betwixt all anti-papal churches. So this anti-papal church or anti-papal Protestant church, they say real, recognized real. At one time, they recognized the real danger and threat of Protestant of 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 papalism, of 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 of, of, of popery, you know what I mean, of popery, and they and they resisted that. In fact, even the whole idea of some people leaving Europe and coming to America for religious freedoms, they were really essentially trying to get away from popery or where popery had influences in their particular respective countries or lands, and including England, Yovas. So there was a right understanding betwixt all anti-papal church and thereby attempted to unite them all into one body against the Roman apostasy. So this is a prophetic and historical period um, of composition, and it was at the height of the Book of Revelations, Church of the Reformation, the, scro the, the Church of Sardis. So this, when when you see in the Bible, there were these different seven different churches. These are seven different church ages. So when we get to the Church of Sardis, that is the age that we can call the Protestant or Protestantism, the Protestant Reformation, right? The Church of Sardis. It was a once believing remnant. You understand? It was a once believing remnant. Sadly, as Saint John the the Revelator revealed in his testimony that we have in the book of Revelation, this church's works, i.e., the good works that Protestantism initially set out to do, were not fulfilled. And that's, and that's what the scripture basically says concerning that particular church. So this, this book we filed it under Ethiopian Christianity and African history. We think that it embraces Ethiopian Christianity in a special way, Christianity in a special way. We could call it African, but being specific, Ethiopian Christianity, because most other African Christianities basically came in through um, the Europeans or the Gentiles. Not so with Ethiopian Christianity. But Ethiopia is a part of Africa, so this is also a shining example of African history and prevailing against enemies both within and without because of that faith and because of because of, 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 of walking and working out in that faith. And it was faith with fruition, having the faith, courage, and the just cause. A, a, a very excellent example, especially for I and I now and even for um, the, the, the repenting Ethiopians, the careless Ethiopians, but this is a very good book. You understand? This is a very good book. So I want to show you this book once again right here. This is the church history of um, Ethiopia. All right? So this is the first book that we'd like to share with you. 
you understand, concerning the new books that we have available. All right? All right, my brothers and sisters. Shalom. Rastafari.